A life and death tussle between rival billionaires, outlaw hackers and desperate taxi firms is playing out on city streets around the world. And the quest to be the first mover in this brave new world of self-driving automobiles will create big winners and losers. So how close are the major players to true automation? And what's at stake if they get it wrong? Join us trackside as we examine who's winning the self-driving car race. The manner in which we zoom around our towns and cities is ripe for revolution in a way not seen since the birth of the internal combustion engine. Demand for autonomous vehicles is set to surge by tens of millions in the coming years. And Goldman Sachs suggests the rise of so-called robo-taxis will expand the global ride-hailing business from present revenues of $5 billion to $285 billion by the end of this decade. Imagine trillions of hours of productive time clawed back because we won't be gawping at the road ahead. Then imagine how pleasant our city centres might be without endless hectares hogged by greedy parking lots. To reach this utopia, self-driving vehicles need to ascend the one to five scale established by the SAE, or Society of Auto Engineers. Let's look at that scale. Level one automation is the most basic and covers things like traffic sensitive cruise control that uses lasers to monitor traffic. It's been available on some Mercedes models since the late 90s. Honda introduced a related feature called Lane Keep Assist in 2008. Level 2 automates a couple more factors, including limited steering assistance. It can raise an alarm if a human driver is tired and can nudge along in slow-moving traffic. Many new cars have this built in as standard. Level 3 can do most driving by itself, but requires human hands on the wheel at all times just in case. Level 4 is where it gets interesting full autonomous motoring, albeit only in strictly defined areas like cities that are pre-mapped to the nth degree. Level 4 means drivers can stop paying attention, but they can't go everywhere. Finally, Level 5 means full independent automation, to the extent drivers can work, play or doze and still get where they're going in one piece. Now that's out of the way, let's meet some of the runners and riders in the self-driving race. Perhaps the most eye-catching, not to say eccentric, entry in the contest is Comma AI. Comma was founded by legendary tech provocateur and Olympic-grade scowler George Hotz. Hotz rose to fame as the first hacker to crack an iPhone, aged only 17. He's since been in hot water with Sony for hacking their PS3. Hotz joined the self-drive race in an unconventional fashion, after he upgraded his own Honda Acura to be self-driving, kinda, with a glove box full of electronics and a shop-bought LiDAR sensor. Hotz's commercial product, the Comma 2, is roughly the size of a smartphone and plugs into assorted modern Toyotas, Hyundais and Hondas and offers modest level 2 automation. His promise? To make driving chill. Not too chill, however. A rear-facing camera in the Comma device, which costs $999 and fits snugly under the rearview mirror, will pull you up sharply if it senses your eyes drifting off the road. Another upstart you may not have heard of is Neuro. Based in California, Neuro is making great strides in self-driving vehicles, although probably not in the way you're picturing. Neuro specializes in low-speed delivery robots, optimized for residential neighborhoods. In Texas, Neuro vehicles have been busily delivering pizza for Domino's or groceries on behalf of supermarket giant Kroger. Neuro's business model is especially attractive to skittish investors, as self-driving vehicles that only move at around 25 miles per hour are unlikely to kill anyone. Among the more glamorous contenders for the self-driving crown is, of course, Tesla. True to form, our old mate Elon Musk promised a self-driving Tesla could complete a self-driven trip across the US in 2017. That never happened. Still, thanks to the way Tesla software updates over the air, every model that rolls off of the production line currently has the ability to go to level 5. Musk just needs those pesky pen-pushing regulators to give him the chance. And besides, countless drivers as we speak are using Tesla's lane centering, traffic-aware cruise control, self-parking, automatic lane changes and semi-autonomous navigation. Tesla's vast fleet is collecting vital data all the time to refine and improve its algorithms, running through twin onboard Tesla chips that are said, by Musk naturally, to be best in class. Another big dog in the fight is GM. Through its partnership with AI Upstart Cruise, the old-school Detroit maker has been running self-driving electric Chevy Bolt around San Francisco since 2017. The thinking being that if they can navigate the hilly, chaotic, weather-beaten streets of San Fran, they can cope pretty much anywhere. So why don't we all have one by now? For the answer, we need to think about just what a fully self-driving future will look like. Many analysts think the current model of car ownership, where families buy one or two vehicles that spend most of their time idle on driveways or parking lots, will vanish. For most people and most applications, some version of ride-hailing or on-off ride-sharing, perhaps akin to a Netflix subscription, will make more sense. 
So those familiar lines of traffic full of stressed out individuals sat in their five-seater two-ton metal boxes should be a thing of the past. As such, instead of trying to convince everybody to buy pricey autonomous Chevy Bolts, GM is putting its considerable resources behind a six-seater robot carriage named the Cruise Origin. Set for production very soon, GM's factory in Detroit is reportedly finalising tooling, the Cruise Origin promises a slicker experience than regular public transport, without the high overheads of private car ownership. Crucially, it also means GM can install the very latest and most expensive LiDAR sensors, which in themselves would put a conventional family car outside most consumers' price range. Plenty of other companies are pursuing this mobility as a service model, as opposed to the likes of Tesla who want to sell you an actual car. Take Zooks, the stylish upstart recently purchased by Amazon for a cool $1.3 billion. It's been trialing a ride-hailing service in Las Vegas, with a suggestion that Zooks vehicles could easily be rejigged to ferry packages around for the company's deep-pocketed new overlords. Also betting big on Vegas is Motional, a $4 billion venture between South Korean auto giant Hyundai and auto parts firm Aptiv. Under its former name Delphi, Motional successfully completed the first autonomous coast-to-coast -coast drive across the United States, pipping Elon Musk's Tesla to the post, and has since overseen more than 100,000 autonomous taxi rides in Las Vegas, albeit with a human operator on board just in case. The world's first ever successful robo-taxi rollout in Singapore also happened on this company's watch. Look out for their promise to offer autonomous taxi services around the world in a fleet of souped-up Hyundai motors as soon as 2023. For now, though, the undisputed leader in the US robo-taxi race is Waymo. A subsidiary of Google's parent company Alphabet, Waymo is already raising billions in private equity capital and impressively runs a fleet of some 600 driverless robo-taxis around Phoenix, Arizona. This is a solid level 4 mostly autonomous service, by the way. Not only can the passengers relax and take their hands off the wheel, but they don't even need to know how to drive at all. If the passenger is distressed at any time, they can punch a button to speak to a human ride support agent, and customer feedback is sought throughout the ride. Waymo already has millions of miles of public road driving under its belt, and the service, partly offered through ride-hailing app Lyft, is popular. Still, critics point to the fact that the comparatively tiny region of Phoenix in which the service operates is a doddle compared to most driving scenarios, and that the company has singularly failed to deliver on its promise of tens of thousands of vehicles rolled out by the start of this year. The rewards for whichever company gets it right will be huge. Analysts reckon human drivers account for up to 80% of running costs. By removing the driver from the equation, taxi profits can and will soar. Not to mention trucking, another area where Waymo is leading the pack. Some 70% of goods in the US travel by truck, so any system that brings down costs without sacrificing safety would be a game changer. Still, the potential downsides are greater. A fully laden Arctic gunning along the highway at 70 miles per hour can do an awful lot of damage if anything goes awry. For now, taxis are where the world's attention is focused, and as you might expect, the big taxi firms have done their best to dominate the space. Uber has spent years working on the problem through its ATG, Advanced Technologies Group, subdivision. Despite its mammoth size and profile, Uber has yet to turn a profit through its core business. As such, the move into autonomous vehicles is no abstract academic aspiration. It's about Uber's commercial survival. Still, various costly setbacks and the tragic death of an Arizona pedestrian in 2018 prompted Uber to recently sell its AV operation to Aurora, which is itself closely aligned with Japanese giant Toyota. But what if we told you the real self-driving leader is none of these high-profile big beasts? Travelling under the radar, so to speak, is Mobileye. Former a Tesla partner, before leaving after a dust-up regarding Elon Musk's attitude to safety, Mobileye is an Israeli firm bought by Intel for $15 billion in 2017. Mobileye's plan is to license its self-driving hardware to legacy automakers, the likes of BMW, Volkswagen and Nissan, which neatly solves the thorny problem of mass production and rollout at a stroke. Having a chip maker as its sugar daddy role is also helpful from a hardware development angle. Mobileye's sophisticated split-beam LiDAR is industry-leading, using clever Doppler shifts to calculate distance and speed with unprecedented accuracy. Mobileye's greatest advantage is that its stack could be used for both private ownership, like Tesla, or public rideshare models. Delivery startup Udily has already committed to Mobileye technology for its promised fleet of 3,000 courier bots. The dark horse in this race, as so often, is China. A lively plethora of tech startups like AutoX, Pony AI and WeRide compete in the space with Uber-equivalent Didi Chuxing and even search giant Baidu's self-drive project. 
The Chinese aren't quite level 5 just yet, but thanks to the country's more entrepreneur-friendly regulatory framework, we can expect to see widespread commercial robo-taxis at the very least in China itself, then exported to the rest of the world. Baidu for one has already trialled self-driving buses and reportedly has a fleet of more than 300 level 4 test vehicles working daily in 23 cities. Remember iPhone hacker George Hotz? When US regulators arched a quizzical eyebrow in the direction of his DIY self-drive plans, he sniffily replied, would much rather spend my life building amazing tech than dealing with regulators and lawyers. See you in Shenzhen. What do you think? Is China at an unfair advantage? Will you give up your own car in favour of a ride-sharing app? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more racy tech content.